All right. So, welcome uh, to the lecture about uh, the most common judging mistakes uh, that that happen uh, in in judging BP in general. Uh, so, basically, how this is going to work is um, I'm going to give you a couple of things and a couple of trends that I've observed uh, over the past uh, like couple of years that I've been judging. Uh, sorry, one second. Great. No, no worries, Emma. Uh, have a Kev, that is a uh, Kev, good luck with your exams. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Then let's uh, let uh, let's let's get started. So if you have any questions on the things that I'm talking about, or if you need more clarification, please raise your hand and then uh, I'll I should be able to to see and uh, and give you a chance to 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 ask me the question. But yeah, that's basically <laughs> how it is going to work. So let's start uh, one quick uh, word of introduction. Uh, the way that uh, that mistakes uh, I, I see mistakes uh, philosophically. So as a debating community, we're all of the times improving uh, upon uh, past feedback that was given, right? So oftentimes the mistakes, uh, how do you say, uh, re resurface, uh, disappear, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So as I said, something that was a mistake, maybe I don't know, five years ago, let's say, over penalization was 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 a huge thing back then, or something like this, is less of an issue now. Uh, and now we have how do you say, completely new mistakes. So even though we might be able to fix some of the mistakes that how do you say I'm going to mention now. Uh, maybe in like uh, two, three years time, this is not going to be any, any more a problem and something else is going to pop up to be a huge, huge thing. So we're in a constant cycle of a correction and uh, this is something else else, else pops up. Uh, it's it, it's, it's uh, how do you say, necessary thing of, of improving as a community uh, in general. So uh, I'm mostly saying this uh, because uh, some of the things that you might hear might be outdated uh, when somebody's listening to it in the future, if they listen to it or something like this, and some of it uh, might be solved. Uh, but as I said, it's a relic of the time that uh, people, how do you say, are, um, that people are, uh, how do you say, uh, having some of the mistakes and then getting corrected, et cetera, et cetera. So with this being said, and with this disclaimer, let's let's get started with a with couple of things. Uh, First thing that I want to start with is the thing that I've seen a lot <laughs> uh, in the past, at least in the past two years, uh, it's been it's been a major trend, which is um, I would like to call it fetishization of weighing in judging. Uh, basically, I think weighing has become a new buzzword, uh, like uh, a lot of buzzwords uh, were, were happening previously, uh, and uh, it manifests in, in in several different ways. One, judges. Uh, how do you say, needing weighing from teams in order to, I don't know, position them in a team. So I've heard many times from, from, from and, and it's a mistake from my wings or from the chairs that I've been checking or something like this, uh, saying stuff like, yeah, but closing didn't provide weighing over their opening, so we cannot really uh, position them over or something like this. So basically, uh, to some extent, uh, how do you say, mandating that a team needs to have weighing in order to win. So that that's the first that's the that's the most egregious uh, mistake that happens, right? Like like uh, saying that this is something that is mandatory. For one, it's obviously not. Weighing is nice to have, and we taught speakers to to do the weighing because we think uh, it's it's a valuable thing. It helps you with judging. It helps you with uh, with how they say uh, how to evaluate uh, specific metrics. However, it's definitely not mandatory thing uh, for a team to have in order to win. So that's the most egregious mistake. Now let's go towards how do you say um, a more nuanced, uh, more nuanced. Uh, in the Peter, I'm going to give you in a second, but a more nuanced form of, of how people see uh, weighing, uh, of how, how people how about the see weighing. One is over printing weighing. So not necessarily saying that it's a mandatory thing, but basically when somebody says a certain certain way that they would weigh a debate, people take it at face value. Let's say, for example, we gave you structural reasons. They didn't give you structural reasons, which is a magical form of reasons uh, called structural. Uh, and or, for example, our case is logically prior towards what I'm mean, opening or something like this. So so this like buzzwordy sort of, sort of situation. What is important about weighing that people often don't get uh, is that weighing is requires similar, if not more, or same level of analysis or proving like the argument. So it's not like a one sentence buzzword that you can just say, throw out there and count that, okay, now it completely changed the debate 
to an extent. For example, when somebody says logically prior and doesn't explain anything about why something is necessary for the analysis to function, why is it the most important analysis in the debate, that's not something that often should be credited at face value. It's obviously not uh, useless. It can have an indication. It can help you in uh, determining or maybe looking at right places, but it's not something that automatically is accepted or credited without a proper and sufficient analysis of what does that even mean? And it, it's especially, problem, not problematic, but it's especially a huge problem when teams notice the judges are crediting this and start to do it a lot more, right? Like even even some, some good people that know that this is not something that, that, that works per se are just throwing it around just in case maybe somebody, maybe a judge bites and, and, and accepts this and some, some of these things. As I said, like the most egregious, not the most egregious, but the most common two things that I've seen is this logically fetishization of something logically prior, meaning that it, this means that it must uh, take over, I don't know, the opening. I oftentimes don't know what this means. Like, what, like, like oftentimes teams don't explain why is this logical necessary for anything after to function. They just say that it is, uh, and that that's a problem. Uh, or secondly, structural reasons like they say the opening didn't give you any structural reasons for this we give you structural reasons firstly people don't really define what structural versus unstructural reasons mean uh, to begin with it's usually a buzzword that people throw around but secondly it usually implies that somebody giving more reasons for something necessarily and automatically should make you win over somebody who gave less reasons for something which it can be the case it might be the most common thing but it's not necessarily uh, what follows. Like, and, and using this as a justification is oftentimes wrong. Or, or as I said, it's not looking exactly. First of all, what are these reasons? Like, like they can have seven structural reasons for something that is irrelevant, or something that is mi minor, or something that is I don't know, repeating itself, or something like this. So, oftentimes, not looking in. Oftentimes, not looking into exactly what these people said versus what are they comparing about is not very useful. Uh, and that, that's when I said, like, like if you say we gave you seven structural reasons, they gave you nothing or something, else, so hence we should win over them without properly explaining to me why, what, and how, and like giving me a bit more uh, reasons for this, is, it also to me categorizes as, as like buzzword throwing uh, in order to, to, to make me <laughs> bite and, and, and vote for you. Uh, sorry, Peter, you had a question. Now, now I think is a good time because I explain a bit more the concept. Okay. Yes. Um, so my kind of issue is with weighing. If both of them have an actor and say that it's very important, uh, but they're not going to tell me which actor is more important in the debate. Um, one has given, like. Uh, my, uh, minorities they have less access it is constantly an issue for them and then the other one have they have poor people they have financial burdens and they have constant stress because of their financial issues both of them give me two reasons both have given me an important and intuitive actor but the closing half haven't told me why their actor is more important usually then my tendency is to give it to opening half just because they had the time to tell me why their thing is more important than the other. Um, but it seems like you don't think that's a good idea. So look, look, uh, let, let me let me tell you, let me tell you one thing. It's not necessarily something that is never supposed to be done, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. Uh, where if you tell me there is literally no difference between things, there is like two reasons for each, uh, exactly as you explained, right? There is nothing that differentiates them. It's just a matter who gave you uh, did they give you more reasons uh, why you should prioritize one after another? Sure. I, I think it's a fair way in a rare circumstances to sometimes adjudicate a debate like this. The problem for me is that oftentimes when I see this being used as the argument, that was not really the case. Like in reality, rarely there is like super symmetric analysis. Everybody gave the same reasons. Everybody gave the same impacting. Everybody had the same analysis and you have to resort to this. And, and I'm not going to... Like, like, who sin throw the first stone or whatever like i also sometimes but very rarely can make a call around this and it's not completely wrong to me the mistake in particular is overusing this in contrast to actually looking deeper into i don't know how how was their characterization 
uh, are these reasons actually good reasons, right? Like, like maybe they have two, two reasons, but I don't know, these reasons are quite weak or like repetitive or something like this. So oftentimes what you said is okay as a last resort. However, a mistake in the recent times is that people gravitate towards this last resort much sooner than it needs to be, right? Then, then looking at all of the factors that said, like, which reasons, which characterization, how is the rebuttal, <laughs> they're implicit weighing, right? Like weighing doesn't always have to be explicit, right? Like some, some of the things that the people say in characterization and stuff can also implicitly weigh them. <laughs> Let me explain why this group uh, is more important or something like this. Then if everything else is symmetric and you cannot make a call on the other metrics, fine. You have to make uh, make something else, uh, make, make, make some other criteria. I think in, in these circumstances, that's okay. But as I said, I think these come much rarer than people uh, use them as, as metrics. Do, do you understand, the, do you understand the, what okay, I mean? Okay, yes. So the fundamental issue is that we're going to leave it up to the people using the explicit word weighing and just, okay, they said the weighing, therefore they're more important rather than actually taking in the full analysis of the argument framing, um, mechanisms, impacts, uh, clashes, all these things. I understand the issue. Exactly, exactly. So that, that that's exactly the thing, right? Like sometimes, and, and with all of the mistakes, like with all of the mistakes that I'm going to be talking about, there's obviously some truth and some, some things that are okay, right? Taking in weighing that is well proven is okay. It's, it's actually great. Uh, however, as I said, uh, because uh, like a lot of the, the judges have been saying to teams in individual feedback, ah, you need to do more weight. So now everybody tries to do more weight, right? Like like every one of my kids, when I tell them, uh, ah, you need to practice more rebuttal. No, no, but the judge told me weighing is more important. Like, like this is like, it's to come to the crazy level of how much individual feedback is about weight. Hence, there is a lot of bad weighing out there, right? Like weighing that is literally what I said, like one sentence or not proven or something like this. And then, as I said, I think a lot of the judges don't know how to deal with this and hence I think over uh, overuse it or something like this. So so just to, just to summarize li lastly, so one, weighing is not mamas, like it's not something that the team has to have in order to win. So let's say that one team has weighing, another team doesn't have weighing. Doesn't automatically mean the team with weighing wins. There is other things to look at, like analysis, rebuttal, characterization, everything. And then if this is symmetric, then weighing can play a bigger role. Secondly, weighing needs to be proven to the same extent how we expect framing, how we expect analysis, how we expect rebuttal to be proven, right? You need to give some reasons rather than giving buzzwords. And buzzwords have become a huge trend. As I said, like, Lord, if I ever hear logically fire one more time, I'm going to lose it, especially because people don't explain what it means. So as I said, buzzwords such as structural reasons, uh, uh, kind of logically prior, all of these things are not uh, true in itself. It's something that needs to be proven, explained to you uh, as a judge, uh, as a judge or something like this. And then lastly, which, which is good that you reminded me, Peter, is... In case there is no other metric uh, that everything is very symmetric and that, I don't know, is that weight can be a determining factor. But to me, it's much closer to the scenarios, like we say, who didn't take POI, right? Like it's very close, uh, very, 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 uh, this sort of situation, it, it can flip the debate. It can make the debate closer, for sure. But does it necessarily, like, but I think ultimately people come uh, and they start using it much sooner than they need to. And that leads me very good to the second broad concept that I also see as, as a mistake. And, and it has two components, which is basically, uh, uh, okay, so Ayman, uh, uh, please uh, go I go before this and then I'll, I'll jump to the next point. Yeah, so like, obviously it is the case that this is like quite an, a prominent problem within the judging world. Uh, my question is just like, say you're a panelist or even a chair and you have two other panelists that really like to prioritize weighing and then you do what you just said. So like, let's say OG has two mechanisms and CG has two mechanisms, but CG's mechanisms are weaker. And I say why they're weaker, but then, you know, like often these panelists have a tendency to do something like, uh, say that's insertionary or something like that, and then defer back to the weighing. So in the case that you are 
in the minority in a panel that doesn't have the same problem as the other panelists, what is the strategic thing to do and or what should you do? So, yeah, that's that's actually a, that, that's a that's a good point, right? Like like uh, especially if if you said that you've exhausted this uh, this explaining about the 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 mechanism. Sometimes I think it's good to potentially flip it onto them, right? Like rather than explaining, uh, rather than explaining uh, how do you say yourself, why do you think these are, are these are weaker? You can actually put the burden on them and ask them, why do you think these are the same? Why do you buy these these for the same or something like this, right? So so it kind of it's a bit of a reverse psychology. Let's put it this way. Uh, but you put a burden on them to prove uh, to 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 tell you why do they think uh, these are of equal value or something like this. <clears throat> That's one. Number two is oftentimes people when prioritizing weight, what you can say. Uh, is the thing that I said at the beginning, which is that weighing is often very short, one to two sentences or something like this. And what is good to remind the judges is one, did they prove their weighing? Because like people don't see it that way and say, okay, but weighing also needs to be proven why we should uh, do it like this rather than being asserted. I think this is a bit assertive. That's, that's one. And then uh, if that fails, you can also say, uh, that they're putting too much emphasis again into something that lasted, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, right? Like Wayne rarely lasts more than this, right? There is like a whole 14 minute speech, which we're boiling down to 30 seconds, right? So we should, before uh, we re before we decide on this and before we are comfortable with this, let's relook at other ways of adjudicating and be sure that this is fully symmetric or fully okay before we gravitate towards it. So as I said, I think you can do a bit of a reverse psychology and ask them the opposite. I think you can, how do you say, uh, remind them that weighing needs proof as well and not just being asserted. And thirdly, uh, ultimately, you can you can point out the discrepancy of what they are, uh, how do you say, prioritizing over 14 minutes of, of, of content and everything that, that happened there, which sometimes is okay, right? Like, but it doesn't mean that you can sometimes prioritize 30 seconds. Like sometimes the speeches are not as good and then, I don't know, 30 seconds can win for sure. But as you said, it's good to, to at least remind them of this and remind them of the gravity of, of the decision because like, people like, don't think see this as, as, as a huge deal. But in order for you to adjudicate the whole debate and the whole clash on like 30 seconds, it really, you need to be really sure that this is that close. And this is that, like, uh, like how do you say, you said something like this. And, that, and, and lastly, I'm, I'm sorry for learning, lastly, you need to also potentially point out implicit weighing that the has done. This is something sometimes that people don't do. Like the people uh, only count when somebody say, my way towards opening government is this, right? Like, but there's a million ways that teams are weighing against each other. One can be their framing of what is the most important thing in the debate to, to be looking at. One can be their characterization, right? Explaining the actors, the actors' needs or something. Else. So implicit weighings or, or even like their analysis can have implicit weighing into this. Pointing out that uh, weighing is not something that you just magically say and say my weighing, but like there is other forms that we should count, and we should obviously not 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 uh, just buy implicit weighing, but see how that implicit weighing weighs up against the, the explicit weighing or something like this is also the the not, not a good trick, but a good thing to to potentially look at. But ultimately, there is no. Uh, every panel is different, right? <laughs> like they're like uh, maybe maybe some of these tricks work, maybe they don't. Like it's it's the name of the game. Like like you will not always get your way. You try your best to explain your positioning and to 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 get somebody to 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 reason with you. But if you cannot do it, yeah, it, it it happens, right? Like like I cannot tell you that this is gonna work hundred percent of the time. So that's a disclaimer. Okay, does that answer the question? Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So let's move on to the second thing, which is very much related to this. And it to me it is a is a symptom. Uh, it's it's the symptom that leads to over prioritizing way, which is interventionism and interventionism as a judges. And this is why we got to the era of weighing, by the way. Because in the era prior to weighing, and in the era five, six years ago. Uh, that I still remember because I've been told, uh, the, the, or, or explicitly in some communities, interventionism was a huge problem. And sometimes it is still, right? Like that means judges 
over-inserting themselves into the debate, uh, giving themselves the ability to rebut somebody's argument, even though they are not in the debate or something like this, uh, dismissing or, or over-crediting some of the things. That, that is a huge problem that exists, right? It still exists today. I would say it exists much less than it was a problem previously, right? So in our course to overcorrect uh, this problem, which was a huge problem back then, we push judges to be like that the interventions are necessarily bad. Interventions are, are, are terrible. You should never intervene as a judge, right? And that's also not fully correct, right? That, 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 that's the thing, right? So interventions uh, uh, have two parts. One is being too much interventionist, which is, I think, clear to you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this, which is, as I said, dismissing, overcrediting, etc. But it can also be too little interventions can also be a bad judgment, right? Or something like this. Too little interventions means, uh, again, not uh, like buying things just because they were not, I don't know, attacked by another team or like not willing to uh, do the way up between the two teams yourself and being kind of stuck. A lot, a lot of the times, the reason why judges are seeking and asking teams to give way is because they're so afraid to, I don't know, uh, to do weighing themselves as the oral adjudicate uh, in the oral adjudication or something like this. And this is okay, obviously, being interventionist, giving your own weighing, uh, I don't know, uh, seeing how teams prove things is not the first resort, similarly, uh, similarly to how I said first, but sometimes it is necessary. That is basically judging, right? Like, like judging 99% of the time is giving a value judgment. What did you provide? prioritize between the two and why, right? A lot of the people are doing it anyway, right? When you say that you that you felt that this analysis was more persuasive than some other analysis, that is interventionist. And that is okay. And we should not normalize, obviously, uh, intervening to the, to the sense of you coming and rebutting somebody's argument or you, uh, how do you say, dismiss, being dismissive, but not intervening at all and just buying face value what somebody is saying to you because I don't know nobody else challenges it or something like this is also a problem. And let me let me let me explain to you why and let me explain to you through a couple of examples in order to, to give you to give you a good uh, a good sense. So one of the reasons why people are complaining against the fast speaking meta, right? Like like people feel that it's unfair, people hate it, people uh, fight against these these speakers, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera is precisely because judges have started to buy things at face value. So that means that if you have five, six reasons for something, oftentimes judge will be like, yeah, this is a well-proven argument. This is like excellent, great. Now, obviously it can be, but oftentimes from, from my perspective, it's very hard to give five to six reasons to a very difficult question. So what oftentimes happens is that very good speakers, and that's why 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 it, uh, why it benefits them, are substituting what the question actually is and proving something completely different. So that means that they have a couple of burdens to prove something, and they give you five reasons, but those five reasons are not fully proving what they intended to prove. Let me give you one example. I'll give you three examples, but like let's start with one. So I had a debate where a very good team, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm just not gonna name names. Basically, the debate was about whether a certain actor would make good decisions or not, right? And their argument is this actor will make good decisions, great decisions, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. They gave me seven reasons for seven reasons why this actor is very educated, very like like uh, has a lot of knowledge and all of these things. Good. It, it, that's fine. That, that it's it's not worthless. Uh, so this, like having a lot of knowledge, having a lot of how do you say uh, experience, can lead to you making good decisions. I can accept this, but it doesn't fully prove that somebody with knowledge would necessarily make the best decision or good decision, right? It can be that, uh, I don't know, they have a perverse incentives or it can be that uh, they, they are a bad actor or that they have a, like like, uh, like some other characteristics, right? So that's a classic substitution where somebody gave you seven reasons why, I don't know, somebody is very experienced and very knowledgeable in telling you that hence with this, they have like 100% proven that this actor will always make good decisions, right? That's that's a classic example of substitution. Now, obviously, this doesn't mean that this team loses automatically. It just means that you as a judge need to evaluate and think, 
what did they prove with these seven reasons? Did they prove without a, a smidgen of a doubt that this actor will make good decisions? Or did they prove that they could make good decisions because they're experienced? And that's the, the second thing is true or something like this. If you buy the first thing, you would put them in first place and like no doubt they have seven reasons, obviously like better than, I don't know, somebody's one reason or two reasons from, from closing government or something like this. If you understand that they have that they've achieved their burden, but to a certain extent, not fully, that is how you say something that can have a huge influence over. I don't know whether you're crediting closing opposition's extension that is talking about the incentive of the actor and saying why the actor has the incentive, bad incentives or good incentives, right, or something like this. That is crucially important. For example, the FDB is particularly hard for me to judge because of this reason. <laughs> because I had a mismatch between my panelists where they were like, but he, they've proven, but opening opposition has proven beyond the reasonable doubt that this actor will make good decisions. And I disagree. I think they've proven that this actor is very knowledgeable, but didn't make the link of why knowledge equals best decisions or something like this. While, I don't know, closing is giving me incentives of why this sector is going to act in the best possible manner or something. This And so I prioritize this over, right? Without being interventionist at least a bit and, and seeing what people have proven and just taking face value, they tell you they've proven good decisions, this would lead to a bad call as well. Now, that's one example. I'm going to give it to Peter now to ask, and then I'm going to give you a couple of more examples as well. Peter, go. Sometimes in bad rooms, they don't really uh, understand the motion properly. And one example that I have is with economic motion. They said, okay, why would it be better for Brazil? They only talked about why it would be better for the economy. And nobody actually made the link why the in better economy would create a better living situation in yeah. Brazil. And everybody went with that worst case and one individual made actual case why it would be relevant to mm -hmm. the people in Brazil but had had a very lackluster argumentation of it would it be interventionist if I would place them first just because they actually hit the main issue of the debate mm -hmm. sorry can you repeat so, so one team has has accidentally hit the, the, the main yes. issue so it's a, it's a good question. Uh, so so the, the problem with by the way hypotheticals just to just to just to let you know, and that's why I don't want you to hold my word against anything in the hypotheticals because hypotheticals really depend on multiple factors, right? You've now explained to me in uh, like thirty seconds what has happened. To me, it does sound like you can. Uh, it does sound like 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 you can, uh, but it's very dangerous as well. Because, uh, and I'm going to explain to you why, and this was the huge issue previously, again, something that led to a bias against interventionism previously. Previously, a huge issue, and that was more 2014, 12, when I, like, start, like 12, 2014 is when I started, this was like a Serbian norm, uh, a, a lot, uh, how do you say, but uh, it, it disappeared quite quickly. This is something that's called spirit of the motion. This is uh, like woo, -woo ghost, <laughs> but it, it's something that that uh, that uh, uh, that was a huge problem, which is basically that the judges were interpreting what is or isn't spirit of the motion, what is or isn't relevant for the motion. So this is something that you need to be careful. So that's why I said it sounds to me that you can put them at first, but you definitely need to check your biases and see whether implicitly, I don't know, economy in general can be relevant to the motion. Or whether it can be uh, like basically to 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 not penalize teams because they didn't do uh, how they say things in the motion that you believe are relevant, uh, rather than how they say are actually fully relevant. Right? Like that, and that's a fine line, and it requires you to really check yourself because and, and being open to say that maybe you for the interpretation of the motion maybe. They have something that, that you didn't think about or something like this. So that's why, as I said, I'm going to give you a very careful yes, in a sense of yes, it potentially can be uh, can can be a winning argument, and yet potentially you can intervene. However, you need to be very careful. Check yourself. Check with wings. 
uh, whether you, do you all have the same feeling that this portion is irrelevant or something like this, and then uh, how do you think they're being? The, the, I had these examples previously. Uh, I, I had these examples previously where one team uh, is, how do you say, relevant by accident and the other teams are, are fully irrelevant or something like this. So I'm not going to say that it doesn't happen. But as I said, whenever these things happen, you need to think through whether you're over-inserting yourself so we don't bring back the ghost of uh, uh, spirit of the motion uh, past or whatever, because that was a huge issue. Previously, the, the way that the judging, and by the way, the judging has become better, even though I'm talking a lot about this take, I think judging overall has been better because previously, back then, it was like, you didn't talk about the thing that I think the motion should be about, and hence, uh, you're fourth. <laughs> That's literally, I, I've got this feedback a couple of times. Vasily, a goal. Uh, yeah, so something that often happens in like bad rooms is that people do not push their impacts to the end. Is it okay to intervene in that situation and push their impacts and then like weigh them on a metric that is who did they have to push the least in this debate? So, so again, big question, it depends. I cannot give you, oh, yeah, it's okay or it's not okay. So as I said, interventionism is the last uh, the last thing that you should do, but it's not something that, that you should never do. That, 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 that's the whole point. So that means that if you can make the call without intervening and without thinking about what is happening, you should not intervene, right? So that means that if, if how do you say, uh, uh, if, uh, let's let's talk about impacts, for example, because impacts are, are for example, the, the issue or something. What would be more appropriate is sometimes people have huge impacts, like like they they claim that with this argument they will I don't know solve the 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 crisis or I don't know solve a huge crisis or help all of the people or something like this, and then with their argument they are uh, how do you say able to prove something to an extent, so not hundred percent, but they've proven I don't know sixty percent or they've proven that it's gonna become better or something like this. It would be a mistake to just hold this team to what they've said in the end in their impacting and be like, yeah, because you didn't prove the impact that you claimed, this is zero and hence your fourth. So nothing that you said matters. That would be also a mistake, right? Adding impacts is a bit weirder in the sense that they have no impacts in particular. But as I said, if, for example, the teams are super close or one team didn't prove anything and I don't know, one team didn't say impacting or something like this, implicitly accepting some of the impacts might be okay in a scenario where you don't have any other metrics to, to adjudicate the debate. So I'm, I'm giving very politically correct answers because I don't want anybody to, to quote me on this. And the, my point of this is not necessarily, uh, how do you say, uh, you intervene all of the time, we are not intervening. In my point is, sometimes not intervening at all is a mistake in itself, right? And as I said, just to return back to, to the to the principle that I said, just to just to just to reiterate what I mean with this is one, when when it comes to teams' burdens and what they say that they want to prove versus what they actually prove in the end, this is often what I feel is a mistake of no intervention at all, right? Like people buying the face value. And this often leads to bad calls. I, I've seen it. Even very recently, I had I had a huge, huge thing, which is basically a team said and it keeps all of the burdens perfectly. If they prove these three burdens, I, I had a recently, recently a final. If they prove these three, these, these three burdens that they've outlined, yes, they win. I fully agree, fully agree with this. But then what they do with proving, they prove something completely different to what they said. But it sounds similar. It sounds that it's uh, that, that it's going in a similar direction when you put it on paper, when you actually discuss their mechanisms, they're not proving the thing, right? So it would be a mistake to say, uh-huh, they have one burden, they have one burden that they said, they've given me five reasons for that burden, hence this burden is proven, and hence they win. That would be a mistake. Not seeing if these mechanisms are fully connected with the burden, and not seeing how they say, to what extent is this proven, right? Because five reasons can be five bad reasons or something like this is a very often mistake that people are afraid to be interventionist or something like this. Now, obviously, you need to be careful here, right? You should not be rebutting these, uh, these five reasons. It's mostly saying, does these five reasons that somebody has given you lead to the conclusion that they've set? And if the answer is no, 
that's a problem. If the answer is a bit, that's also a valuable information because if it's not one versus zero, it can be that they've hit the burden just not fully. Hence, how they say it, it plays into the bay, they can still win. Or yes, they've hit it fully or something like this. So thinking about this actively is very and super important, especially in the fast picking meta. Because that's what people are frustrated. When people say people are overcrediting fast picking meta, usually this is what people are, are, are doing this. Now again, I I also give first to people who speak fast. Like you can they can tell you or something like this. Because oftentimes the reasons are good enough. Oftentimes these reasons are not rebutted at all or something like this. So that's fine. So that doesn't mean that you see somebody didn't fully hit their burden and you dismiss them. It means be critical and see whether a burden has been hit. That's one. Number two, interventionism uh, that, that 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 sometimes happens. Sometimes it happens too much. Sometimes happens too little. Is when it comes to factual disputes and spec knowledge, right? Uh, and and there is again two schools, right? Like like the, the the judges take one is too interventionist. One is too little intervention. To interventionist is, I am an averagely intelligent voter. I don't know economy or IR. Hence, whatever you said is, is if you don't speak to me in a baby voice, is wrong. I've seen this. <laughs> I, I, I've seen. I, I, I've seen this sort of situation. So, average intelligent voter is not a stupid person. Right? Like average intelligent voter is somebody who can understand logic and stuff that is being said to them. Like they understand what inflation is, not not to the intricacies of. I don't know, like all of the the, the next improvement, uh, a lot of the details about inflation, but they understand the concept of inflation, for example, or they understand the the I don't know, um, what's the what's the name um, things that is happening around the world and is quite like uh, prominent and obvious. They understand what's been happening in the Middle East uh, a bit. So so being too interventionist and dismissing somebody for having like uh, facts or something like this is is wrong. And is starting to resurface, so so I don't want to bring it back. But similarly, uh, how do you say accepting something and being like, yeah, but as an average intelligent voter, I don't I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's uh, how do you say how it is, and, and nobody gave me, or or even worse, uh, people people say I'm gonna give you structural reasons for something that is true that is clearly not true, so you have to buy it. That's also a bit of an issue, right? Like so, as I said. Uh, Keeping in mind that as an average intelligent voter, you do know some stuff and people cannot lie and cannot give you five structural reasons for an obvious lie and then you buy that lie or something like this is something that, that I see as a mistake. Again, don't uh, that, that it's about balance. It's not about taking taking away from the lecture. Ah, Miller said we should uh, strike down uh, the arguments uh, when, we th when we think this is false. It's obviously checking your biases. Every time you're uncertain and every time you need to gravitate towards the decision that is interventionist or something like this, you need to, first of all, check your biases. You need to talk to the panelists and see. That's why it's very important to have panelists and ask them, do you think this is this is something that is a common knowledge? Do you think this is something that is reasonable or something like this? So hence, if multiple people have the same feeling, it might be a good indication or something like this. So it's not something to, uh, to do lightly. Obviously, this is why people uh, people interpret this as you should not do it ever because it's difficult uh, to check your biases, etc. But it's also a mistake to never do it and to be like, yeah, I'm not going to intervene ever because this is like wrong. I've been, I've been talked in a school. So this is, the, I've been talked in a, in a debate debate class. So as I said, interventionism can be uh, can be both good or bad depending on how much is it being done, and that's why this like Goldilocks principle uh, is quite important. Like Techway has a very good video that we did on this for um, for the WDC Korea judge training program. Uh, we we noticed this as an issue back then, and it's still an issue. So I suggest you also take a look there to see. Uh, before I go uh, before I go to the next point, I'm gonna give you just two more examples of. Uh, this substitution principle and burdens not uh, not being met or how they say where it often happens uh, like three of the most common one one I already said the second one is about the principled argumentation uh, oftentimes uh, and to be honest I'm a bit torn here because we do have a tendency to kind of dismiss principled arguments which is also a huge mistake but oftentimes also people especially when prominent speakers are speaking don't really what the burden of the principled argument is and just buys it. For example, 
oftentimes principle that people are saying you have the duty to help somebody. You have like, like I don't know, like we disenfranchise this sort of people and we have the duty to help them. Oftentimes the judges that I've judged with, the wings, don't notice that this is a conditional principle. This is not a deontological principle. This is the principle that is based on the fact that you will indeed help these people, right? If this can kind of say <laughs> policy and if a team proves that this policy is not helping these people, this principle is useless and false or something like this. So this is often a substitution uh, that, that people say. People say, if I prove this principle, this goes beyond any practical point. And our principle is, if, uh, how do you say, these people have been disenfranchised and hence we have a duty to help. Yes, and then you have a duty to explain to me why this policy helps them rather than, how do you say, not helping them. And if a team proves to me that this doesn't help, hence you're not, uh, not fulfilling your burden. That's the most often thing that happens uh, when I look at principles. Now, again, just to reiterate, this doesn't mean that principles are bad. Principles are great. Principles can be excellent arguments and you should not be dismissive of them. That's one of the mistakes that people do. But it's also very important to look at what burdens the principle has uh, versus what a speaker or team has actually proven in the end. That's, that mismatch sometimes is a huge issue that can lead to Oftentimes, rapid teams getting away with murder, with with like uh, running a principle that is conditional, and people being like, "Yeah, but it's a principle, so they 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 must win." And their weighing is often this principle goes beyond any practical implication, even though their principle is conditional or practical implication. So that's a huge example of both weighing is being uh, being utilized. And lastly, which I found more common in 2023, 20, 24, so that that's the most fresh one is, uh, how do you say, uh, saying uh, and proving that somebody has the incentive to do something doesn't often mean that, for one, they will do it, two, that it will be good for them, and that they will, like, oftentimes people conflate and say something will happen because people have the incentive to do so. However, many actors act in many irrational or terrible or, like, things that is bad for them ways, right? That means that, I don't know, if uh, Israel or I don't know Iran have the incentive to do I don't know something. This doesn't mean that automatically this will happen this way or not happen this way or something like this. because not countries, uh, people, uh, communities. Not everybody always acts within their own uh, incentive and within their own best interest or something like this. And this is oftentimes completed by the judges just because somebody has this says there is an incentive to to to, to be good doesn't mean that they uh, in a good manner but second of all just because somebody has the incentive to do something doesn't often mean that they have the ability to do something for example let me give you a recent example let's say that uh, the team said that uh, facebook and uh, i don't know a social media companies have the incentive to i don't know have, and they give me five reasons why they have it they're going to be legally liable they're going to blah 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 to remove hate speech content or something like this it does not mean that uh, how do you say social media companies have the ability to remove uh, to remove such content or something like this, or or like they're going to be effective at this or something like this. And this is often something that judges are complaining and say, yeah, but they said that this actor has the incentive, hence they're obviously going to fix this problem, but it's huge and it's not easily fixable or something like this. So these are the three examples. Uh, two of them, uh, one of them, very very recent recent trend that I'm seeing uh, of how not necessarily critically thinking about the burdens that teams are setting, sometimes leads you to over-crediting certain things and, being, uh, and no intervention here can lead to a bad outcome. Okay, so uh, one more thing. And this, this closes, the, the, I'm not gonna focus more on the interventionism. I have like two, three more, uh, two, three more uh, additional points because we're running out of time. Or something like this, <clears throat> and as I said, just watch a judge training program by Techway. Uh, very good. Anyway, so one more thing that I see as a huge mistake is judges seeing the debates and seeing the arguments as one versus zero sort of analysis. That means that the argument is either, and I've mentioned this a bit previously in the previous section, but I'm going to mention it now explicitly. That means that argument is either fully proven or fully not proven or something like this. So either, as I said, the team has proven this argument, hence they win, 
or uh, they have not proven this, and hence they don't win or something like this. Or either they can prove this for all of the people or, or none of the people. And this is something that oftentimes does not happen in real life debates. Debates are messy. Teams rebut each other, teams kill each other's arguments, and then teams, I don't know, uh, prove their point to a certain extent. That means that looking at it from that perspective can oftentimes lead you to make a bad call, right? That means that both teams can prove to some extent that some group may be harmed. And uh, as I said, oftentimes that what I see as ju- what I see from my wings usually is that a, a, a judge would be like, yeah, I bought this, uh, that, that, that bought they, they, full, they fully proven that, that this group is going to be harmed. Hence, this other group is not harmed at all. Hence, think about arguments as and, and burdens, similar to what I said about the, 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 the interventionism, as extent of proof, right? Like the fact that they didn't fully prove, I don't know, that all of the hate speech is going to be removed from social media still doesn't mean that they, that they didn't prove that it's going to be a bit better or something like that. And that bit better can still be something that is valuable in the debate, right, or something like this. So let's say that a team says what I said as the rebuttal, right? Okay, they have, uh, Facebook has the incentive, but it doesn't, don't have ability, hence they're not going to do it wrong. Oftentimes what I see judges doing is being like, yeah, that the argument is out of the debate, obviously uh, closing opposition has been Yes, to an extent, right? Like, yes, the argument is sufficiently mitigated. Yes, the argument, how do you say, uh, yes, they didn't prove that they're going to solve the whole problem of, of hate speech. However, they didn't, not they, they proved something. Then they proved that, I don't know, situation is going to get become a bit better or uh, to some extent, uh, how do you say, we're going to solve this issue. And that thing has to be weighed then up against what other team has been pro- has, has proven or something like this. So don't look at it as binary. Uh, it's not one versus zero. It's oftentimes teams will prove that a certain policy will have some good implication on a certain group of people, and another team will prove that there's arms within the policy. And then it's on to you to uh, decide which one you prioritize and why. And obviously, it's good if they give you weighing. Remember what I said. However, if they don't, uh, this is this is something that is important. And this also becomes important. When it comes to buying way, by, right, by the way, because oftentimes when teams weigh, they're going to pretend that it's one versus zero. They're going to pretend by saying we win because we've proven that we remove all of the hate crimes from social media. And hence they didn't, I don't know, and, and they didn't prove this argument at all. Hence we win or something like this. And they kind of force the judges to look in this binary manner. Ah, did they prove? Uh, versus the, the opposition or something like this. And hence, that's why also weighing is not often the most useful metric to use uh, in adjudicating debate, because oftentimes it's quite biased and it's quite, I don't know, uh, binary, right? It's quite like we win because we destroyed everything and we've proven this and hence you're out. And the truth is they've proven the extent of what they're saying in their way but also opposition has something that was not disproven by their argument. And hence, you need to, how they say, compare these two things that are like. That's why, uh, that's also why weighing being taken as face value is not 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 often the best because teams are going to pretend that it's one versus zero. Uh, last two, uh, before I open the floor to a couple of minutes of questions and then, then we can go, uh, is one, under crediting rebuttal, and this is what people, uh, what, what I what I see a lot, which is oftentimes teams rebut each other, but I rarely see it being mentioned, or at least mentioned to the sufficient detail in uh, the the adjudication when I'm when I'm talking to 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 my wings, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It often comes down to again weighing or comes down to again what teams have proven but rarely about hey this team engaged very well towards this argument they have three reasons why this argument doesn't work i think this argument is sufficiently mitigated hence this argument is 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 a bit positioned worse in the debate so explicitly looking at rebuttal and what did rebuttal do rebuttal kick out the rebuttal flip the rebuttal how they say do something is Often a mistake. Now, obviously, if it's very obvious and if it's a very good speaker that really destroys arguments in their rebuttal, it's rarer. The mistake doesn't happen that often. 
but more uh, likely is the team does a clumsy rebuttal, but the rebuttal is, is important nonetheless. But to me, it sounds like many wings that I've judged with, kind of like like not slept through, but kind of thought this this part of their speech is like a hygiene check, right? Ah, they rebutted some things, okay, and then they said their own things, and which is more important, right? They don't see it as a crucial point of engagement where I don't know having a bit more, how do you say, uh, responses or something like this can keep the scale, can be an extension in its own, right? Like uh, engagement with the uh, with the team that is first in the debate and good engagement with them can be an excellent extension for I don't know closing opposition that doesn't have an explicit extension or something. Like I rarely see this being brought up and uh, uh, by by the wings. And this is something that that obviously should be looked into. Doesn't mean that rebuttal always wins. Doesn't mean that rebuttal is always useful. It just uh, commenting and looking critically at rebuttal is also something that is important. Lastly, and this is something that is much rarer now, but I have to mention it because uh, it obviously still happens and is 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 a huge problem when it happens. Uh, is penalization. So penalization of teams did happen a lot previously. This was like that. In the, this was the wild west of. 2012 uh, to 2016 deb debates or something like this, which means that uh, there are some rules in the manual that we say that people interpret like uh, very absolutely, let's say contradictions, for example. That means if a team is contradicting another team, uh, I, I, it's not that common, but I still hear teams say, yeah, but that's why they're fourth. They contradicted, hence... Uh, they contradicted the other team. There was like a, a backstab or something like this. Uh, they backstab their opening, hence they cannot place it over their opening. Uh, one, uh, backstab, contradiction, etc., is something that, that should be, I don't know, you should dismiss the contradictory part, you not take into account what is uh, what has been backstab, etc., et 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 that's fine. However, that doesn't mean that other things that people have said in their speech do not count. It's just something that should be uh, penalizing towards the part of the speech that was contradictory, towards the part of the argument, but it doesn't mean that automatically the full argument is out, or it doesn't mean that the full speech is out, or that the full team is out. That's something that, again, doesn't happen that often, but happens nonetheless, and hence needs to be mentioned, needs to be mentioned in this lecture. Similarly, similarly to any other rule, uh, to any other rule uh, in in the debate uh, that, that we talk about, uh, squirreling, uh, how do you say, or or I don't know, not taking POIs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So obviously you should take action, but if that action is disproportionate and goes well beyond uh, what is uh, what is what is what is required, then you've gone too far. One more example is motion types. Like, for example, I don't know, the government has a model on the debate that is not a model. For example, this house supports or this house opposes. This does not mean that opening government automatically loses. You just disregard their por portion of the model and then you move on. Or closing government thinks, I don't know, they're novice and they think they, they can have a model in their speech. That happens a couple of times. And then, I don't know, my wing said to me, yeah, they had a model, hence they cannot win. Like, what? Like, that's one part of their speech. There is a million other things that you should take into account. So. Stay away from, how do you say, uh, making a huge, uh, big decisions upon uh, the perceived breaking of rule uh, and approve the rules in a, like a moderate, normal fashion that, 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 that should happen. As I said, I'm not saying either any of you do this. Uh, it's being recorded. Somebody might do this and might, might do the, might, might, uh, it might help them. So again, there is no automatic fourth. There is no automatic penalization of the entire speech. You cannot do this. That's a huge. That's a huge mistake. If something like this happens, <coughs> we oftentimes <laughs> have a in judge test. We oftentimes have a question that is targeting this penalization. Oftentimes, these questions have the the worst points. Uh, if you if you answer them wrongly and if you over penalize teams, I'm going to give you a big secret. Uh, please don't over penalize teams, even though a lot of teams people are not doing this. So. 
that's mostly what I had in mind. Uh, what I had in mind for today. Obviously, there's there's other mistakes that, 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 that can be talked about. There's also mistakes in the way that uh, the wings are communicating in the panel. Chairs are doing OAs, etc. However, all of these things are going to be covered in the other. I hope they're going to be covered in the other uh, sessions that are going to be recorded as well. So I didn't want to touch upon the mistakes in the OA or mistakes in that uh, deliberation or something, etc. Mostly because it might be touched upon by other people. I didn't want to jump into the territory. I'm also focused on a particular evaluation of the cases. So if you have any questions, uh, I can stay for like a couple of more minutes and answer. And if not, uh, I have a needed discussion. Mm -hmm. Can we? Okay. So most of the cases is uh, where we think in the tradition, uh, at the traditional like uh, with a motion body. Suppose this house support motions where most of the time we evaluate whether or not the trend you are support trend you are approaching here is, is giving you more more yeah, more uh, uh, good utility or not. That's why you sub or uh, that basically catering most number of vulnerability or other factors or not. In most of the cases is where there are some sort of motions here. What? Where the those impacts or those kinds of utility depends on the yeah optimistic impacts and therefore most of the times problematic here like half of the teams or half of the teams basically debating on the impact and half of the teams basically debating on whether or not whether or not you are talking about those utility is justified or not or basically which where is likelihood or not. Therefore, most of the time, there are a discussion between panels that we should cater about uh, the impacts or we should cater about those kinds of utility or not. Mm -hmm. Why I feel that this is a problematic because uh, it, it basically confuses to basically uh, in balance splits. I'm not talking about basically whether or not catering arguments or not. I'm basically talking about as... It's the, basically in most of the cases, you know, as a motion party, as a basic knowledge, we should cater about how basically, how as a far for how basically motion should get catered. But in particular, the other problems comes here when most of the teams talk about debating uh, impacted, uh, impacting, but don't prove it why impacting is more important is debate. So, so, so this let, is the fact. Let, let's let's put it. Let, let let me let me briefly briefly answer because we don't have. It's a huge discussion. It's a valid discussion, but uh, I don't think we have <laughs> we have a half an hour. Uh, did you uh, did you got my question? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I did, I did. So, so basically, in in some of the some of the motions, in some of the motions, especially the health reports, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there might be a different emphasis on mechanization and uh, how do you say proving why something can be more important or not versus impacting. And I I see this. Especially impacting is often things that people gravitate. I fully agree. Uh, and this is something that happens. The problem, and I'm going to give, again, a very politically correct answer, doesn't mean that, how do you say, uh, I, like all of this is within the debate. Impacting, just impacting, can also be a very valuable thing. A team adds on somebody who's just giving mechanization. And that's true for any motion, right? If a team just gives mechanization but doesn't fully prove the impacting or, or explains their impacting, Addition of impacting can also win. So, so uh, as I said, uh, and, and it's very hard without uh, seeing a proper exact debate to say one over the other is going to be correct, right? So I think the most important thing in this sort of uh, uh, debates uh, is to be open-minded to any of these contributions being debate-winning and important, right? That's why we, it's not, we should not fetishize mechanization or impacting or any of these things. Sometimes, I don't know, sometimes framing can be the winning thing in the debate because it, I don't know, takes down uh, both opposition things or something like this. So what is debate winning and what is not debate winning should not be viewed through the lens of the motion type or anything or any, any other rules. It should be viewed through what did the team contribute and how much is that important to the winning of the entire bench or something like this. Sometimes it can be impacting, sometimes it can be mechanization, sometimes it can be framing or rebuttal or something like this. So that's why it's a very politically correct uh, answer, because I, I get your point and I get your frustration that sometimes people are over, uh, over crediting, I don't know, just impacting. And that is 100 percent true. I think that is that is that is correct that some people are doing this. However, I would say that it would be a similar mistake to also over credit mechanization and dismiss 
impacting as the good and valuable form of uh, contributing to the day or framing or any of these things. So there is no uh, set rule that says impacting is always going to be more important than the mechanization or vice versa. So that is uh, that is uh, how you say, uh, that that is the most politically correct that I can get. And I was told that we need to stop because there is another session that's going to go uh, on right now, and I need to let you go to listen to to Kaito. Uh, uh, and uh, but so I hope that answers your question. And uh, again. Thank yeah, you. yeah, I got your answer. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. And and yeah, have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.